Formula One has long relied on Europe for good reason. After all, the birthplace of F1 is in Europe, and with majority of fans residing there, with the sport embedded in various different cultures, F1 has solidified itself as the dominant category in the region, which sees large crowd numbers flock to the event in order to get a glimpse of their favourite drivers, piloting some of the most technologically advanced machines in the world. But I think we are currently in the middle of a major shift, and I don't think I'm alone in saying that. For example, there was a time where no Formula One races had existed in the Middle East, and the USA was a tough market for F1 to get a hold of due to fans not showing too much interest in the product, much preferring to follow homegrown categories such as NASCAR and IndyCar. Whereas now, we have four races in the Middle East, excluding Azerbaijan, which is in close proximity to the region, and the USA sees three races on the current calendar with more seemingly on the way due to Formula One's rapid expansion in a booming market. Europe still leads the way with nine total races, and many may think Europe still dominates the calendar because of this, but as time goes on, Formula One shifts further and further away from their homeland and plans to continue building in the USA and the Middle East, which raises a big question for the future of the F1 calendar. Is Formula One moving away from Europe? Bernie Eccleston acquired the television broadcasting rights to Formula One, which saw him gain a firm grip on the sport in what was a competitive arm wrestle among executives for power within Formula One in the 1970s, which has since been labelled as the FISA Foca War. In simple terms, a battle for control between the governing body and the Constructors Association. With Bernie solidifying his position of top dog in Formula One alongside Max Mosley, he made it his mission to unlock the sport's full potential and reach by expanding into new countries using broadcasting deals and tapping into new markets which would attract new fans, sponsors and revenue streams to turn F1 into a global phenomenon. It's important to know that a lot happened under Bernie Eccleston's control, but so that we don't drift away from the topic of the video, we're going to stick purely to race expansion and Formula One shift into new markets. Formula One became an attractive product for countries and cities to consider hosting despite the large investment involved. The cars were fast, loud, technologically advanced, and the sport was a huge spectacle. F1 would expand further into Asia with Malaysia, and then China, Singapore, Korea, and India, meaning Japan was no longer the only Formula One race in Asia, which began all the way back in 1976. The Middle East also made its way onto the calendar in 2004 with Bahrain, and would later see Abu Dhabi, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia host races in Formula One. The United States has been involved in Formula One for a very long time, but it was a market where Formula One struggled to leave their mark and become a location where the sport truly made an impact. It seemed like Formula One was at a loss of what to do with the USA, and it seemed like nothing could really fall into their favour. The audience never really gelled with the European product, and after the disaster of the 2005 Indianapolis Grand Prix, Formula One wouldn't return until the Circuit of the Americas was built in Austin, Texas. So what exactly changed, and how has the interest in hosting Hosting such an expensive event risen to unprecedented levels. It's 2020 and the pandemic has stolen headlines across the globe. Everything is shutting down. The gym, restaurants, school, work, sports. Formula One would shut down until July, where F1 would host the first race of the season in Austria. In what would see a major reshuffle of the calendar to accommodate the uncertainty of what was happening, Formula One would utilize the back-to-back -back model on three separate occasions to add an extra three races to the calendar, with two races in Austria, at Silverstone and two in Bahrain using an alternate layout for the second Grand Prix. Most of these races would happen behind closed doors, meaning grandstands were empty, but with majority of the world's population stuck at home with not much to do besides channel surf until something moderately interesting popped up, Formula One became a COVID sport, something people would watch because it was on TV 
and in some way, they were forced to watch it. With this, just a year prior, Netflix released their brand new series, Drive to Survive, which followed the Formula One world in 2018 and documented what goes on behind the scenes and gave an insight into the lives of the drivers and teams. The series exploded. It sent the F1 world into the stratosphere, meaning millions of people had become fans of the sport. This was only the beginning. Drive to Survive would release season two, and the fan base for not just the show, but the sport continued to skyrocket. Interest in Formula One was at an all-time high, and when 2021 came around, the stars aligned and bought us one of the best Formula One seasons of all time. The total viewers in 2021 sat at 1.55 billion, an increase of 4% on the previous COVID year. The USA alone saw a 58% increase in viewers only behind the Netherlands. Followers across socials were up 40% to a combined 49.1 million followers. The USA saw more fans walk through the gates than ever before, with 400,000 people attending the Grand Prix weekend. This is still with limited capacity. 2.69 million fans attended Formula One events throughout 2021 during a time where tracks could only allow limited capacities due to COVID restrictions. The demand for F1 was on another level. And since then, F1 has consistently sold out events across the world. The harsh truth is, times have changed. With Formula One more popular than ever before, the sport relying on Europe is no longer a factor as multiple races in other countries are now very much financially viable. The days of low attendance numbers causing bad ticket sales are in the past. Fans would sell their soul for a Formula One ticket nowadays, and circuits are more packed than they have ever been before. There's a sort of reluctancy to extend contracts at some of our beloved racetracks because Formula One's direction has changed. The sport is somewhat now not just being seen as a show, but being treated like one with over-the-top facilities and quirks that you just aren't going to see at a place like Spa or the now gone from the calendar French Grand Prix. Formula One's focus in the United States is gaining strength as the seasons go on, and more and more races are being floated to be a potential F1 race. Tracks that we love, such as Spa for example, which is widely regarded as the ultimate F1 track, may be living on borrowed time. With a contract until 2025, Spa's contract extensions seem short, with reluctancy on F1 side. The product of Formula One is so attractive now, but space is very much limited. A 30 round calendar is far too long, and honestly cruel to the teams and personnel who need to make that life commitment. Therefore, someone has to give. My stance remains the same. History should always feature in Formula One. Spa may not provide amazing racing, edge of your seat racing, but it still needs to exist in order to showcase the rich history of our great sport. With the market opening up, Formula One no longer relies on its European audience to buy tickets and pack the grandstands. The tickets now sell themselves to anybody and everybody across the globe. The Middle East investment in Formula One is just about unmatched. With seemingly unlimited cash to spend, it puts the Middle East in pole position to secure long contracts because the future of the circuits and races is a sure thing to Formula One. It's not like European racers are struggling to sell their tickets, but the shift towards focusing on the show could mean we see less and less European races as the seasons progress. It could mean an equal number of races in the US, Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. But one thing is for sure, Formula One no longer truly relies on Europe.